Hey everyone, Andy Sykes here, and today we're gonna to go through everything that's wrong with my 3,000 pound Alpha 156 GTA. But before we do, please remember to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Now I've had my Alfa Romeo 156 GTA for over a year now, and I've done a lot of work on it. Even though I've replaced the alternator bushes, the infotainment display, had the chem belts done, replaced the water pump, repaired the heater blower, and I've had a complete respray. This bargain, 3,000 pound Alpha 156 GTA is far from perfect. And I think things are gonna start getting really expensive. Now, when I bought this car from the original owner, it came with a mountain of paperwork. And when I spotted the original owner had spent nearly 30,000 pounds on this car, I was both impressed and really anxious too. Sure, this might be the UK's cheapest Alpha 156 GTA, only 3,000 pounds, but could I really afford to keep it on the road? With a year of ownership under my belt and an MOT due, let's go through everything that I know is wrong with my Alpha 156 GTA, then take it for its MOT and find out if there's any nasty hidden surprises. So let's start with the big one. Yes, this car does need welding and I knew about that when I bought it. When I went down to check it out for the first time, I had a good look around it. I put my phone underneath the car and I recorded the entire floor pan and I discovered some pretty solid metal work underneath there, except one small hole in the boot floor, which I know does need welding. Luckily for me, that is not structural and I don't think it will fail its MOT for that, but let's hope there's nothing else lurking underneath. Now, another issue that I know about my car are the headlights. Now, this car came stacked with optional extras. The original owner really splashed out when they were specking this car out. And one of those optional extras were these auto leveling xenon lights. Now this one is pretty good, it's nice and clear, but the other one on the right hand side is looking pretty murky. As you can see, it's all cloudy and that is inside the lens. Now there are a few things I could do to this. I could try polishing it up and lacquering it up, or I could replace it. The issue is another one of these lights is around five or 600 pounds if I can find one. So what I need to do is figure out how to fix this. I don't think it's gonna fail its MOT, but it really needs fixing because driving at night is a bit of a nightmare with these lights. Now something else I've noticed with driving this car for over a year is the suspension is a little bit squeaky and I think there's some loose bushings as well. So that really needs looking at. Again, it doesn't really affect the overall ride and performance of the car, but it does get a little bit annoying on long distance journeys. And if that play is too bad, it could fail its MOT. More squeaks come from the brakes. The brakes perform really, really well, but again, annoyingly they do squeak. So I do probably need new pads and maybe even new discs. Now a fun game I love to play when I get in my Alpha 156 GTA to take it for a drive is airbag light roulette. Will my airbag light come on and stay on or will it come on and go off? Let's take a look. There it is, it's on. Will it go off? Yes, it's gone off. Now that isn't always the case. Sometimes the airbag light comes on and it stays on for ages. And I know what the problem is. It's loose connections under the seat. Anyone owning an old car, especially a late 90s or 2000s car will know adjusting your seat can sometimes loosen those connections and cause the airbag light to come on. The problem is if that light comes on during its MOT and refuses to go out, you guessed it, failed MOT time. So fingers crossed. And even though my Alpha 156 GTA looks absolutely stunning with its new paint job, there is something that lets it down. And that's what's lurking underneath the bonnet. The engine bay, well, just have a look at it. It looks a bit tired. It looks a bit messy. And there are things missing like this cover for this box. And it could do with a real good clean. These pipes need re-chroming, but these are not big issues. These are not things that are gonna make it fail its MOT. And that is the big concern and worry I have now. Will my 156 GTA pass its MOT? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's take it down there. And we're back, a new day, a new location, and a new MOT. But it didn't pass with flying colors. It does have a few advisories. Now in the UK, an advisory is basically a small issue with your car that's found during the MOT. And if it isn't fixed, it can lead to a bigger issue and eventually a failed MOT. So let's see what advisories I've got on the 156 GTA. 
So an interesting one and something that I wasn't really expecting was pedal wear. One of the issues with my car is the pedals have worn away. Now the Alpha 156 GTA does have alloy pedals and as you can see they're quite smooth and there's no real grip on those. Now they are a little bit tatty and they do need a refurb but the MOT has flagged up that they're quite slippy too and they do need a bit of work. So that is something that I plan to do on this car before its next MOT. As I thought, they picked up on the rust on the car too, but as I thought, it isn't structural and it didn't fail its MOT for it. But I still want to get those patches welded up to make sure they don't get any bigger in the long run. So something we did know about was this headlight. The MOT has flagged up that it is deteriorating and it's getting cloudy. Now I've been thinking about this since recording my first video and I'm wondering, could I buy a standard headlight and replace, replace just the lenses? I don't know, perhaps that's a cool project that we can try. And another thing that I didn't realize was the fog light. This right-hand side fog light isn't working. Again, it's not an MOT fail, but it's something that I wanna fix before the weather gets any worse. Now, something that was surprising was the tire condition. Now, the tires look great and they haven't really done many miles. They were replaced just before I bought this car. Now, these Michelins, they look really good. They feel great on the road, but apparently, according to the MOT, they are wearing on the inner edge and a few of them have got a few cuts and slashes. They're not dangerous at this time, but it does beg the question, when and what am I gonna replace these tires with? That brings up another question. Now, this car has been lowered, which probably accounts for that wearing on the inner edge. And I've got Bilstein coilover suspension on this. Now, I find the suspension pretty over damped. It's pretty good in certain situations, but on some bumps and in some corners and in compressions, it can feel a little bit uncomfortable. I'm wondering, is it time to replace the suspension with a more modern coilover system? that surely should also improve the handling and also perhaps even lose some weight. These old coilover systems are pretty chunky compared to modern stuff. Maybe I can lose some weight on the GTA and improve the handling too while fixing the tire wear. Now something I did know about but had forgotten about is the oil leak on this car. Yeah, it's an Alpha. It does have an oil leak, but it's not a very big one. But the MOT station did pick it up. Now I think I know what this is. According to the history, the sump plug had been replaced with a tapered one. It looks like someone's messed up the threads on my sump plug, meaning the oil is leaking from the plug, regardless of how tight it is. So this might mean another sump plug is needed or perhaps a new sump is needed, I'm not sure. But it's an easy fix, I think, and also one that isn't a major issue. It's only leaking a tiny bit, but it's one to keep an eye on. Another really interesting thing the MOT station came up with was the handbrake cable is actually fouling on the exhaust. Now, I'm not entirely sure why I need to get under and take a look at it, but it is an aftermarket exhaust and I assume it uses larger pipes and a larger back box, which could foul that brake cable. It doesn't cause any issues when using the brake. It doesn't have any knocks or bangs when I'm driving, but again, it's something I'm, I'm now aware of and I need to fix. This is really racking up to be quite a list of mini projects to work on. Final thing on my MOT advisor is, is the rear wiper blade. It's split. That's an easy one. Super simple fix to do. So that's it. My Alfa Romeo 156 GTA passed its MOT just with a few advisories. And those little advisories, well, they're just great projects for me to work on to make this car even better. Now, if you guys have had any similar issues with your car, please let me know how you resolve them in the comments below. That could really help me. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. That helps me with my content and it helps push me up the algorithm too. Thanks again, guys, and see you all soon. Goodbye.